There's an old Latin saying that reads, Civi pacem parabellum. Translated plainly, it means, if you want peace, prepare for war. And a perfect example of where this is playing out is Taiwan, an island just 100 miles off the coast of mainland China. And it could easily be the flashpoint that determines the future of the current world order. Taiwan's defense ministry recently urged that China has intensified its military, economic, and diplomatic coercion of the island, employing so-called gray zone warfare to exhaust Taiwan without resorting straight to open combat. Cyber attacks against Taiwanese infrastructure have been reported, and the report even claims that China plans to, quote, saturate areas around the island with balloons, drones, and civilian boats, effectively hiding any Chinese military activity in the waters surrounding Taiwan. Earlier this year, China's Fujian Coast Guard began ramping up patrols in the waters surrounding the Taiwanese-administered Kinmen Islands, which are a mere three miles off the Chinese coast. This happened after a fishing boat capsized whilst being pursued by a Taiwanese patrol boat, which led to two Chinese citizens being drowned. Following the incident, the Taiwanese authorities expressed regret over the deaths, but maintained that its Coast Guard was simply acting in accordance with the law after the fishing boat trespassed into prohibited waters. Beijing, however, didn't see it the same way later accusing Taiwan of using dangerous tactics to forcefully seize Chinese vessels, whilst, quote, seeking to evade their responsibilities and hide the truth. The incident is just another case in point, and again highlights how tensions are escalating between the democratic islands and their not-so-democratic neighbor. China, or the People's Republic of China, sees Taiwan as a renegade province that must be reunited with the mainland, ideally through diplomacy, but by using force if necessary. The history goes back centuries, but in more recent times, the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1949 saw Mao's communist forces victorious over the Chinese nationalists. The nationalists, led by the Kuomintang, or KMT party, retreated to Taiwan and effectively formed the modern Taiwanese government, who still claim sovereignty over all of mainland China despite being confined to the island of Taiwan. President Xi Jinping recently stressed that the issue of Taiwan cannot be passed from generation to generation. And some analysts say that tensions are likely to escalate to a full-scale invasion of the island by as soon as 2027, the year by which Chinese military reforms are set to complete, putting Beijing in the prime position to quickly seize Taiwan by force. Beijing's official defense budget has risen today to more than $223 billion, and it's expected to grow by a further 7.2% in 2024. Since 2020, the People's Liberation Army, China's major military wing, has acquired over 400 fighter aircraft, more than 20 guided missile warships, and has even doubled its inventory of ballistic missiles. A fourth aircraft carrier is also currently in the works, which will allow China to challenge US dominance in international waters, and also allows it to compensate for the limited number of regional military bases compared to the Americans. So why would the US be willing to go to war over Taiwan? And why should the rest of the world care? There's two main arguments. The first one concerns the global balance of power and preserving US foreign policy across Asia. And the second concerns the entire world economy. We'll start with US foreign policy. You see, Taiwan is located right at the heart of the world's most economically consequential region, where it forms a critical part of what's known as the first island chain. The so-called chain essentially anchors a network of US allies and partners across Asia, stretching from the Japanese archipelago all the way down to the Philippines and out into the South China Sea. All of these countries are crucial to the region's security and the defense of US interests in the region. Without going into too much detail, the first island chain essentially forms a naval blockade, which restricts China from projecting power far beyond its shores. But if China somehow broke the first island chain, it would be able to significantly limit US military operations in the region, and consequently its ability to defend its Asian allies. If the US were to instead stand aside in the face of Chinese aggression and China successfully annexed the island, it would be only 70 miles from Japanese territory, and only 120 miles from the Philippines. US allies would come to question whether the Americans would or even could come to their defense. If this were to happen, it wouldn't be surprising then, having lost confidence in US commitment to their security, if these countries chose to either increase ties with Beijing, or hedge against it by expanding their own militaries or even developing nuclear weapons. Neither scenario is particularly appealing to the US given that its influence over the region will be severely or even completely diminished, and challenging China's bid for regional dominance would become near impossible. Either way, a Chinese attack on Taiwan, regardless of its success, would almost certainly trigger an economic depression that would be disastrous for most of, if not all, of the developed world. This brings us to our next issue. Back in the 60s, Taiwan was one of the first countries to make electronics manufacturing the core of their economy. And that hasn't changed. 
Today, Taiwanese companies, led by the manufacturing giant TSMC, produce just under 70% of all semiconductor chips worldwide, and over 90% of the most advanced chips which power just about every single electronic device you can name, from smartphones and computers to satellites as well as military and defense applications. If the factories were destroyed in an invasion and the world managed to lose Taiwan's production capacity, there'd be no other company or country on Earth that would be able to fill the gap in a reasonable time frame, meaning that the production and shipment of semiconductor chips would quickly grind to a halt, leading to a global shortage and thus hyperinflation of basically every product that makes use of the technology. If the chip factories managed to survive but fell under Chinese influence, Beijing would essentially have complete control over an industry that spearheads the global economy giving them enormous leverage in global geopolitics. So why don't we just produce the chips elsewhere, you might ask? Well, as the US has already discovered, replicating Taiwan's semiconductor industry is much harder than it sounds. In December of 2022, Apple CEO Tim Cook, along with US President Joe Biden, announced that TSMC, Taiwan's largest semiconductor and electronics producer, will start to manufacture some of its most advanced chips in a new facility in Phoenix, Arizona, at the cost of a whopping $40 billion. The problem is that advanced chips like these are only a fraction of the global electronics supply chain. And even then, the plant won't be capable of producing chips at anywhere near the scale needed to mitigate the economic crash. Taiwan has effectively become indispensable, and all of this makes a compelling case for the US and its allies to defend it if any military confrontations were to take place. Nobody in their right mind wants a war between the US and China. But now, just as we've seen before, sometimes to preserve the peace, it's necessary to prepare for war. I hope you managed to learn a thing or two from this video. A lot of effort goes into making them, and if you haven't yet subscribed, now would be a good time to do so. Don't forget to also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.